Heavenly Father, we approach you this first day of the week, thanking you for sparing our lives, for giving us the night of rest, for giving us health to wake this morning to come and worship you in the spirit and truth that you instruct us to worship you. We pray this day that as we are pouring our hearts unto you, that the words spoken from your word will fall upon our hearts, that we would 
implement them into our heart, that we would be the examples into the world around us that we are to be as Christians, the shining light in the dark world. We thank you so much for the people that meet here at Laurel Canyon, for the love that you have shown us, for the love that we have for one another, how we help each other in times of need. We especially thank you for examples that we have seen at this congregation over the years, like our sister Reed who just passed away. We thank you so much for her faithfulness, for her always willing to be here when she could. And we thank you for her example in her life. We're so thankful for those who you've restored portion of their health that they're able to be with us. And we also know that there's others that are home that can't be here because of physical illnesses and sicknesses. And we'd ask that you would watch over them and encourage them and help them. We also pray for those who are spiritually ill those who have put calluses upon their hearts and turned away from the first love that they had. And we would ask and pray that there would be something that would remove that callus, that they would once again name you and be a follower of yours again. Help us in that journey. Dear Lord, as we sing praises under your name, as we open your word and read together, may everything that we do and say and think be holy upon your word. And we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll sing number 36 in the supplement book before our lesson this morning. <clears throat> Have you heard that the common God is serving my kingdom? Have you heard that the song is very great? From above, was the official going to serve me in my finger? Shall I eat it? Shall I eat it? Yes, I'll go to serve my king. we're going to be reading together from the book of Psalms in the Old Testament, right around the middle of your Bible. If you will, open a Bible back to Psalm 19. If you didn't bring a Bible with you, hopefully there's one very close to you beneath the row of chairs in front of you. And We want to read from God's Word this morning. Imagine with me for a moment having just sung that last song and taking a seat and being told that beneath the row of chairs in front of you is a chest of treasure 
that is more precious than gold. How anxious would you be to access that treasure? Imagine with me being told that there is a box beneath the row of chairs in front of you and what is there is sweeter than all of the honey that you will ever be able to taste. Can you imagine what that would feel like? what that would stir within your heart. That right there in front of you is something worth more than gold and sweeter than anything you've ever tasted before. How anxious would you be to get a hold of that? The theme of our Vacation Bible School this year is the treasure chest of God's Word. And we throw that phrase, Vacation Bible School, around a lot. But I want to emphasize to you from the very beginning of our time together this morning, and if the Lord wills next week, the key word in that phrase that we use to describe our efforts is is Bible. Our aim, Lord willing, next week in this special series that involves everyone nearly of any age is to look into the Bible and appreciate what God says about the Bible. And and for our, our youngest ages, we're using this, this template of a, a treasure chest of God's Word. That's not just springing out of nothingness that that's not just a a clever gimmicky sort of theme to get a, a child's attention you've got your bibles open there to psalm 19 the question is why why treasure chest obviously lord willing next week if the lord wills we're going to walk through various aspects of that but what i would like to do with you this morning really is just to kind of set the table for what is to come It has been so encouraging to see so many different adults pitch in on so many different levels over the course of the last several weeks in preparing to teach our children about the treasure chest of God's Word. And so let's open that treasure chest this morning. You, You imagine having access to this great treasure chest and you pop the lid and perhaps in the first uppermost compartment of that treasure chest you see emblazoned on the bottom of that God's revelation. In Psalm 19 we begin reading in verse 1 and the psalmist writes for us the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork day to day pours out speech and night to night reveals knowledge there is no speech nor are there words whose voice is not heard their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the earth in them he has set a tent for the sun which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber and like a strong man runs its course with joy its rising is from the ends of the earth or the ends of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them and there is nothing hidden from its heat. Psalm 19, 1 through 6 is in fact a revelation of God. It is according to the psalmist a revelation of His glory. The glory of God is seen all around us in creation. The glory of God is declared in the rising and the setting of the sun. 
The glory of God is seen in the blue skies of the heavens and the white clouds that pass by. The glory of God is declared in every single flower that blooms, every single tree that blossoms. The glory of God is seen in all of the cornfields all over the state of Ohio where corn stalks are growing. And it won't be very long before they're, they're taller than each and every one of us. All of those things and a million more are declarations of God's glory. Could I put that at the forefront of your minds this morning and, and encourage you this week to have eyes to see that. That as you see the sun making its course across the sky, realize that is a declaration of God's glory. As you drive by those cornfields or soybean fields, that's a declaration of the glory of God. As you water your flowers and you even have access to water, realize that's a declaration of the glory of God. But I want you to listen to me. One of the things that so many people don't understand in this world. We live in many ways in a world where people are very interested in the spiritual dimension to life. And they get it in their minds. All that I need to do in order to experience the spiritual is just to get out early and watch the sunrise. Or to get to a, a, a high place in, in the hills or the mountains and watch the sun set. And that gets me in tune with the spiritual nature that I'm so interested in. God is very clear in telling us all of the aspects of creation around us declare His glory. But if you want to know Him, Open up your word. Open up his word. Because your knowledge of him will never exceed your knowledge of his word. You want to connect with the spiritual. You want to connect with something, someone who is greater than you. You want to understand where you have come from and why you're here and, and what life is all about and where you're going Open up the revelation of his will. Because Psalm 19, 1 through 6, creation declares his glory. We continue reading in verse 7, the will of God is revealed in his word. And I would suggest to you, beginning in verse 7 and on down through verse 11, we're noticing different facets of his word. A facet is just that smooth flat, polished section of a gem. And each different way that you turn that precious gem, you see a different aspect, a different attribute, a different facet of that precious stone that you're holding in your hand. Would you begin noticing with me the facets of God's Word in Psalm 19 and verse 7? Number one is the law of the Lord. When a Jew read that in its original language of Hebrew, they would read that as the Torah of the Lord. And they would understand that that word Torah means instruction. First five books of the Bible, the Jews referred those to those as books of God's instruction. The law of the Lord, where God, in this facet of his written, written revelation to mankind, is saying, these are my instructions, and they are perfect. You don't have to be a parent very long to figure out that your, even your instructions aren't perfect. You think they are, perhaps, when they're first delivered. And then life has a way of showing you. Yes, you might be in a position where you can give instructions, but your instructions aren't perfect because you're not perfect. 
Not so with Almighty God. The law of the Lord, the instructions of the Lord are perfect. And I want you to notice with me how each one of these facets has an effect on the human heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. Facet number two, the testimony of the Lord. We might paraphrase that as God saying, this is who I am. My law, these are my instructions. My testimony, this is who I am. And the testimony of the Lord is sure. When God says, This is who I am. We can be sure of that. We've been studying here in the auditorium on Sunday mornings through the Gospel of Luke. And Luke is so bold to write to a Gentile named Theophilus. When you read this orderly account that I have put together in interviewing all of these eyewitnesses, you can have certainty. That's the testimonies of the Lord. They are sure. And notice the effect of God's word on the human heart. Making wise the simple, the uneducated, the uninitiated. Those who are just beginning. Those who have a long way to go. Notice facet number three, the precepts of the Lord. If the law is where God says, these are my instructions, and the testimonies are, this is who I am, the precepts are, these are the fundamental principles of wisdom. This is how I created the world. This is how it works. This is my place. This is your place. This is who I am. This is who you are. This is what I will do. This is what you ought to do. Precepts. The fundamental principles of wisdom. They are right. And notice the impact that they have on the human heart. The precepts of the Lord are right rejoicing the heart. How far God has gone in these great books of wisdom in the Old Testament to show us He is not seeking to kill our joy. He is not seeking to keep that which is good or better or best from us. He loves us. He wants what is best For us, which is why he has given us these precepts which are right and have the ability to awaken and feed and sustain joy, real joy in our hearts. Lord willing, we'll talk more about that this evening. Facet number four, the commandment of the Lord. If the law is these are my instructions and the testimonies, this is who I am and the precepts, these are the fundamental principles of wisdom. The commandments are, this is how I want to be served. And not all commandments that get thrown around in the world are pure. Some of them are just for the benefit of the giver of the command. Some of them are very self-centered. Some of them are all about taking from you so that I can get what I'm really looking for. Not the commandments of the Lord. There is not one trace of unholiness in what God has said. This is how I want to be served. And if I will take that precious gem and I will turn it and I will see the facets of God's commands and I allow those to sink into my heart and I meditate upon them and I give myself to walking in them, what I find is enlightenment. Listen to me this morning. You can go on the tops of beautiful mountains and I love the mountains. But if you want enlightenment, enlightenment isn't found on mountaintops. 
You can go to the most beautiful beach by the most beautiful sea in all of the earth. But if you want enlightenment, enlightenment isn't found on the most beautiful beach in the world. You can go look for enlightenment in Barnes and Noble and all over Google and in personal conversations. And you can find millions of people who will say enlightenment right here. $99.95. Three easy payments. If you want enlightenment, open the treasure chest of God's Word. You don't have one of these treasure chests? See me afterwards, and I'll give you one. Because the commandments of the Lord are pure, and it is by God's design, the God who gave you your eye, His commandments enlighten our eyes. Facet number five, the fear of the Lord. We could paraphrase that. This is how I will be respected. The fear of the Lord is clean and it endures forever. I don't have to worry about what sort of mood God is in. We realize as human beings, sometimes that can be uncertain, right? I can leave the house in one mood and I can come home in a different mood. You can leave in one mood and you can come back in a different mood. And perhaps the mood changed just from one room of the house to another. And we don't always know who we're dealing with and what sort of mood they're in and and how the circumstances of the day have, have impacted a mood. Not God. The fear of the Lord is clean and it endures forever. Finally, the rules of the Lord. These are my boundaries and they are true. The boundaries are there for a reason. They are true boundaries. They don't move. They're true boundaries. They're not out to fool us. True boundaries put there for our flourishing. And they are righteous altogether. They have the ability to lead us in the paths of righteousness. Would you think just in those few verses from Psalm 19, right there in the heart of the Bible, what God has told us. Anyone and everyone can see his glory in creation. In fact, Paul will go so far as to say in Romans chapter 1, if you see creation, if you live in creation and you act as if there isn't even a God there, you're without excuse. Why? Because Psalm 19, 1 through 6, creation declares the glory of God. But my knowledge of God will never exceed my knowledge of his word. And so I pick up this amazing God-shaped, God-fashioned, God-polished gem. And I begin looking at all of the facets of that gem and I find laws. These are my instructions. I find testimonies. This is who I am. I find precepts. These are the fundamental principles of wisdom. I find commandments. This is how I want to be served. I find fear. This is how I will be respected. I find rules. These are the boundaries. And you read with me beginning in verse 10. Those laws and testimonies and precepts and commandments and fear and rules, they are to be desired more than they desire, more than I desire, more than you desire, gold. And so let's make this real. When you leave here this morning, and you walk outside of those glass doors, there is a Brinks truck. Keys are in it. The gas tank is full. 
not just the gas tank, but every square inch of that Brink's truck is full of gold. But in order for you to drive that Brink's truck away, you've got to walk away from God's revelation to mankind. Your creator says, you walk away from this treasure chest, you're a fool. Here's why. How long do you get to hold on to that gold? How long is that going to last? Let's get real personal. How long are you going to last? Whereas you appreciate that for what it is, but this is the treasure chest of God's word. And God, your creator, is telling you this morning, what's in here is worth more than gold. Because that gold isn't going to last forever. And your time on this earth isn't going to last forever. But there's a part of you created in the image of God that is going to last forever and spend eternity somewhere, either with God or separated from Him for all of eternity. And this is showing you who He is and who you are and what He wants from you and the most fundamental principles of wisdom and how He wants to be served and how He will be respected one way or another and the boundaries that He has given you to make sure that you walk in the pathways of righteousness. And you do that and you will spend eternity with Him in a place that makes brink trucks full of gold look like hot wheel cars with monopoly money. But the point is not, well, I'll trade a little here for a lot then. The point is, he's God. And he's the greatest treasure of all. More about that if the Lord wills this evening. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. By them, moreover, is your servant warned. And when we learn who God is and what God wants and we come to trust and obey Him, what we find is great. Reward. We have found the treasure chest of God's word. Which leads David to write or ask in Psalm 19 and verse 12. Who can discern his errors? If I'm in the wrong, I can't always see that even about myself. Declare me innocent from hidden faults. You can't do that for me. I can't do that for me. But God can. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. All of the gold in that Brink's truck can't do that for you. But God can. Let them not have dominion over me. How many examples of men and women around us do we need to have that show us all that this world has to offer doesn't provide freedom. In fact, it comes to dominate. And truth be told, make me miserable. Then shall I be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. David is able to pray because when I learn who God is and what God wants and I come to trust and obey him, what I find is great reward. Go with me to the next book of the Bible, the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 1. If we open up the treasure chest of God's Word, that first big compartment that we find, it's labeled God's revelation. And then we dig a little deeper and we find another compartment in this great treasure chest. And it is labeled your heart. God's revelation, now your heart. 
And you notice how in Proverbs chapter 1, we've got this introduction to this God-breathed wisdom that is more precious than gold. Proverbs 1 and verse 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, he's writing in his own words, Here's his introduction to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance to understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. Here's the basis of it all. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools who are more interested in the gold in that Brinks truck despise wisdom and instruction. And so you look with me at Proverbs chapter 2. God's first big compartment in his treasure chest is labeled my revelation. And we lift that up. And now beneath that we find this compartment my heart. And in Proverbs 2 and verse 1. My son if you receive my words. That's compartment number 1. And treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding. Notice, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasure then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of the Lord. And so if he's there, and if he is good, and if his goodness springs from his infinite, perfect holiness, and he created you and me to be holy, And I choose the Brinks truck over him and embrace unholiness for the next 50 years. When he has warned me, it is a fearful thing in my unholiness to fall into the hands of a living, holy God. I've played the part of the fool. The fear of the Lord is the basis of all of this. And if I will seek His laws and His testimonies and His precepts and His commandments and His fear and His rules, what I find is a great reward. If I will seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then I will understand and I will avoid wasting my life. Which leads us to the New Testament book of Colossians chapter 1. Go back there with me quickly to Colossians chapter 1. If we open this great treasure chest of God's word, that first big compartment is labeled God's revelation. And I lift that up and I now find a compartment that is my heart. What am I going to do with that revelation? And I lift that up and now I find compartment number 3, God's love for me. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 21, here's why that matters. Colossians 1 verse 21, you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. Here's the bottom line. We've all taken those keys at one point or another and driven off saying, I want this more than God. That's what sin is. God has said, don't do that, and in the moment I'm tempted with that, and I want that more than I want God, and so I take those keys and drive away. And I declare myself hostile to Him. God says, do this. I don't want to do that. And in the moment, I don't want to do that more than I'm worried about any sort of consequences with my creator. What I discover is alienation from him. 
Because my heart isn't revolving around his revelation. My heart is revolving around evil deeds. And I'm lost. I've driven away and I'm lost. And there isn't anything in the back of that truck or anything that I can discover on the road ahead of me that will give me hope. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15, speaking of God's own Son. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. You are not the main character even of your own story. I am not the main character of my time on this earth. All things were created through God's Son. All things were created by God's Son. All things were created for God's Son. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by blood. By the blood of a cross. By the blood of his cross. God's own son died on a cross. And Paul says, you need to understand, this involves you. You once were alienated and hostile in mind doing evil deeds. You had driven away saying, I'm not interested. And God's son died on a cross. And now the news comes all the way to that far country where you drove, where I drove, and I wasted everything. And here's the news. God's Son can reconcile me in His body of flesh by His death. Everything that I wasted, Even myself can be reconciled in order that now I can be brought back home to the God that I declared myself in opposition to. And I can be presented holy and blameless and above re reproach before Him. If I continue in the faith, Stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel you heard. Paul says that has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven and of which I, Paul, became a minister. And before he's done, he wants you to understand something. In Colossians 2 and verse 1, I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all those who have not seen me face to face. In a very real sense, that involves you and it involves me. That their hearts may be encouraged. Compartment number one in God's treasure chest, God's revelation. Compartment number two, your heart. Compartment number three, God's love for you. That your heart may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Would you just pause for a moment and think about what we have just been told? For 2,000 years, this treasure chest has been making its way all over the earth. And we open up that treasure chest and, and compartment number one is God's revelation. This is who I am. This is who you are. This is what I expect. This is what you can expect from me. 
and, and we dig deeper and we come to compartment number two and we find my heart and your heart. And God tells you, tells me all about the part of you, of me created in his image. The part that will shape who you really are. The, the seed of all the decisions that you're going to make the judgments that you'll make, the priorities that you'll arrange. And then we dig a little deeper and we find in compartment number three, God's love for you. We're unholy. We make choices that dishonor God. We deserve His wrath. God's own Son died on a cross so that we could be brought back to the giver of life, the greatest treasure of all, and he is showing us over the course of 66 books that in his son are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, Lord willing, one week from tomorrow night, beginning and throughout the rest of that week, our children are going to be learning about that principle from this angle. That God's word is full of these precious gems. God's story, number one. And God's gospel, number two. And God's promises, number three. And God's wisdom, number four. And God's plan, number five. And we're going to do our best to get down on their level and teach them those principles that are more precious than gold. But my question for you this morning is, do you understand what you're holding in your hand? And do you understand finally what it demands of you? Because at the very base of this treasure chest is one more compartment that shows me I cannot discover God's revelation and the nature of my heart and God's love for me and walk away completely neutral. No, the very bottom of this treasure chest God inscribed words. Consider your ways. It's what he said to his people through the prophet Haggai. In chapter 1 and verse 5. Now therefore thus says the Lord. Consider your ways. You have sown much. And harvested little. And even if this land flowing with milk and honey provided the most amazing harvest in the history of harvests, but they didn't harvest a relationship with God. God would say, you have sown much, but you have not harvested what matters most. You eat, but you never have enough. You're going to eat lunch, and you're going to get hungry again. And you're going to eat supper, and you're going to get hungry again. And you'll eat if the Lord wills for the rest of your life, but you'll never be fully satisfied. There's a part of you that was designed by God to hunger for righteousness. And if you eat like a king for the rest of your life, but you don't satisfy that hunger, you will have wasted your life. You drink, but you never have your fill. We're incredibly blessed in this part of the world with clean water that we don't even think about. Here is the water of life that quenches the thirst of the soul. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages does so to put them into a bag with holes. What if you have that Brinks truck and you drive away gleefully, not knowing that in the bottom of that truck is a hole? And every mile you drive, a little bit more is leaking out. Consider your ways, God says. You can lay up and store up and acquire and enjoy incredible treasures on this earth. But consider your ways. 
here is the greatest treasure of all. Consider your ways. God has revealed Himself to us. He has revealed the fact that we have hearts. You're created in His image. And there's a part of you that's going to last forever. You messed it up. I messed it up. He gave His Son who shed His blood on a cross. And in Him are hidden all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Consider your ways. This morning, if you need to respond to Him, we're going to sing these words that resonate all over the New Testament. Blessed are they who do His commandments. And in order to be reconciled to Him, we need to listen to God's Son. As He says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. Blessed are they who do His commandments. Christians aren't perfect. Sometimes we stumble. Sometimes we willfully drive away. And and we see in God's written revelation to mankind the call even to Christians to repent and to pray to God for forgiveness. Blessed are they who do His commandments. Consider your ways. And if you need to respond to the giver of this great treasure chest, and we can help, would you let us know how we can help by coming to the front while we stand and sing?